Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to append content to a file on the SPIS file system of the ASP32. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from the FProbot. So in the two previous tutorials we saw how to write a file and how to read a file in the SPIS file system. And we also saw uh, that if we write a file and um, open it for writing, uh, write some content and then if we open the file again for writing we'll just overwrite the content uh, which is the, the, the behavior uh, of this file system. So basically here we are going to see a technique where we can actually append content to an already existing file which will obviously um, expand a lot the, the use cases that we can apply uh, the SPIFS file system. So moving on to the actual code as usual, we are going to start by including the spiffs.edge library, so we have access to the spiffs extern variable that we are going to use to interact with the file system. Moving on to the setup where we are going to write the rest of the code, we start by opening a serial connection to output the results of our program, and then we are going to mount the spiffs file system before we uh, try to use it. If it fails, then we are not going to, to proceed because there's no point in trying to interact with the file system if it doesn't correctly mount. So the first thing we are going to do after mounting the file system is actually creating a file uh, to make sure there's some file uh, in our file system to first uh, append some content and then to read it. So the procedure for this was already covered in detail uh, in, in a previous video, but basically just as a quick recap, in order to write a file to the SPIFS file system, we first need to open it uh, with a call to the open method on our SPIFS object, and then we pass as first input the path to the file, and as second input uh, the opening mode, in this case it will be uh, the constant file underscore write, so we are basically indicating that we want to write content to the file, and if the file already exists, we are just going to overwrite it. Uh, so this is the behavior when we pass this constant file underscore write. So we are going to store our our file object, and then we are going to do an error check to make sure uh, that it was correctly open. And finally, we are going to print some content. In this case, I'm going to be using this print uh, ln from uh, um, uh, from the the file uh, the file class, which is basically the original print uh, version plus uh, a new line. So basically, when we use this function, it will always append a new line after the content that we write to the file. This is very similar or equal to, to the print all end function that we call on the serial object, uh, which simply appends a new line uh, to the content that we write. So basically, we are going to write this, um, this first line of content to our file. It is called original line. So basically, it represents the content that we already to, that we will have uh, originally in the file. When we create a file, it will just be this line. So basically, uh, this behaves pretty much like the print function. It will return as output the number of bytes written, and we are going to, to be using it here uh, for error checking to make sure uh, the file was correctly written. So after that, after we write content, the content to the file, we are just simply going to call this close method um, in order to free the resources and to make sure the file is actually written and saved on the file system. Now that we have created the original file with a, a line and we, we have clearly defined what is the original content of the file. The next thing we are going to do is appending some content uh, to the file. So this on this section we are going to execute that procedure. So again the first thing we are going to do is opening the file with a call to the open method called on our spiff subject and we are going to pass the same path here of the file that we have created in the previous in the previous section. So basically is this test.txt file in the root directory that we are now going to open again. But this time, since we want to, we want to preserve the content that there is already in the file and we, and we want to append new content, we pass this constant file underscore append instead. So we don't pass the file underscore write, but rather the file underscore append and the behavior will be any new content that we write to this file will be appended at the end and the, all the content that was already there will be preserved. So naturally, as we are, were doing before, we need, uh, we should do an error check to make sure the file was correctly open, in this case for appending, because if it is not correctly open, there's no point in trying to write more content to it. So in case um, 
the file was correctly open. We are just simply calling again uh, the println function uh, here. So we could we could have called the, uh, just the print function, but I'm I'm being consistent and always adding a new line at at the end of the content. But basically, we write to the file pretty much like we would do uh, if we just open it for writing, not for appending. The procedure is exactly the same, and obviously the the all the framework, this piece framework will take care of, of the rest for us. So, uh, as I was saying, we just write the content normally, and now I'm going to, to write uh, another line called the pendant line, so when we are printing the content, I can clearly see what was the original line and what was the pendant one, and to confirm that they, they, they keep their order, because we first um, we have first written the first line and now this line, so I'm, I'm keeping these things consistent. Then again, I'm going to check here, do an error check to make sure the bytes were written to the file. And at the end, I'm going to, to close the file uh, to make sure all the changes are saved uh, in the file system. So to finalize the procedure, what we are going to do is basically opening the file for reading. Recall from the previous tutorial about reading a file from the SPICE file system that when we are opening a file for reading, uh, we don't need to explicitly pass here any constant because the default mode is reading. The second parameter with the mode is optional and when we don't specify it, it defaults to read. So we check again if we could properly open the file and if we do, we are just going to iterate here while there are bytes available, we are going to read one by one by calling this read method on our file object. And we will keep checking how many bytes are available if there are some bytes available with this call to the available method. And we are going to print everything to the serial uh, to the serial port so in the end we can check it in the Arduino EDS serial monitor. Finally, and to, to avoid leaving any resources hanging, we are simply going to call the close method on our file object as soon as we finish reading it. And that's it. It's pretty much this the procedure to append some content to a file. Um, all the source code here is a little bit bigger because we are covering, we are doing everything in sequence. We are first writing the uh, the file, then appending some content and then write, writing it. This is why the, the actual code is a little bit bigger. Uh, but basically the, the appending procedure is really simple and really similar to, to writing content. The only difference is the constant that we pass to the open method, and it is really, really simple and, and intuitive uh, doing it. So that's it. I've, I've already uploaded the code to my SP32 as usual, so we don't need to wait um, for the procedure to execute. And as you can see here, basically, uh, the first line indicates that the file uh, was written, so it, it is the, the, the moment where we create the file. Then there's another line saying that, okay, uh, the uh, pin content was was uh, was successful, this procedure was successful. And then after that, there's the, uh, the file content that we read. And as you can see here, the first thing that is printed is our original line. And you can see that then there's a new line because we've, we have used the print all end function on our file object. And then there's the second line, the line that we appended after after the initial procedure. So I'm just going to run the code again so you can see this live. So as you uh, could see, I've just restarted my code and again, everything is working fine. Uh, sorry, I've just clicked on the wrong side. So everything is right. The file was written, appended, and then the content the final content was was successfully obtained from the file. That's it. Very simple. Uh, so far, interacting with the, the space file system has been really simple. The, the API is very intuitive. So we already know how to append uh, content to the file, how to write the file, and how to read the file. There are a lot more operations that we can do over this file system, and we are going to cover them uh, in future tutorials. Thank you very much for watching.